Why do I always get so awkward when I haven't filmed for a long time? Like I've literally been standing here messing with my hair for the past five minutes because I like can't start the video. <laughs> Hello everybody, long time no see. It's been about like four months I think since I last uploaded a video, probably longer than that since I last filmed a video. So it's been a really, really long time since I've done this. Um, I apologize for disappearing on you all, but um, I'm really grateful and appreciative of you all for giving me the space that I needed to just take some time away. But I'm back home now, which is super nice, as you can probably tell from my bookshelves. I have my books with me again, which is so comforting. I literally just love having this behind me. Like, it just makes me feel like I'm home. And I'm very nervous, but also very excited to be filming again. I miss it so, so much. It's just, like, felt like part of me has been missing while I've been away, while I haven't been filming. But it was also a necessary break. So, yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to film today's video and to catch up on all the videos that I've been wanting to film for a while. I'm thankful and grateful to you all for just sticking with me through this. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you to those of you who just came along recently to those of you who've been here for a while. Anyway, I'm not gonna make this intro super long. I want to get into the topic of today's video, which are the 20 books that I want to read in 2020. Basically, my 2020 reading list. I do this video at the beginning of every year. Um, I've done one for, I think, 2017 through 2020 now. It's been so long. But yeah, I love making this video at the start of every year. It's basically just my comprehensive list of the books that I want to read this year that are either like already out or that I like physically own. So there are some more books that I want to read this year that haven't come out yet that I don't have copies of so I can't include them on this list. Those are obviously books I want to read this year too and ones I'm excited for, but this list of 20 books are basically just books that I physically own, that are in my possession, that are part of my own collection, whether audiobook or physical book that I really want to read and have been wanting to read for a really long time. Some of them are also newer, some of them are actually advanced copies of books that are not out yet, but I I have the advanced copy, so I'm still counting it as part of my own physical collection. But yeah, like I said, I love making this video. It's one of my favorites to make every single year, and I'm really excited to talk about these books that I'm very excited to read. It's been a long time since I've been excited about reading, and it feels really, really nice to have that excitement back. So without any further ado, let's get into the top 20 books to read in 2020. So first up on my list is a book that I've been dying to read ever since it was announced. I got the advanced copy, I started reading the book. It was one of my most anticipated books of last year and I just did not get around to reading it last year because towards the end of the year I just was not reading anything at all. So um, it's like the top of my list for this year of books that I need to read and that is absolutely The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. If you didn't know, if you're newer here, since it's been a while since I've talked about this, one of my favorite books of all time is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and this is her second book. That was her only book for the longest time and she finally released a new book last year in November I think. And yeah, it's one of my most anticipated books like ever and I'm extremely extremely excited to read it. I have started it um, but I'm definitely gonna start it again because it's been a couple months since I picked it up. I don't want to know anything about it. I really don't know anything about it and I like keeping it that way. All I know is that there's some kind of magic going on in here. I think there's like an underground library something along those lines. I know there's something to do with bees, something to do with keys, <laughs> and um, a sword, I think. There are just like some images. Yeah, there's the key, the sword, and the bee. There are just like some motifs that are present in this story that I know everyone talks about. But yeah, I'm very, very excited. Like, look at these end pages. Like, that's so beautiful. I'm so excited to read this. I know I'm going to love it. Like, this is going to be minimum of like four star book for me. And I doubt that it'll be anything under five stars for me, honestly. Like I know myself, I know what I like. I know how much I love Erin Morgenstern's writing and her storytelling. So yeah, incredibly excited to pick this book up and I cannot wait. The next book on my list is actually one that isn't out yet. This is an advanced copy that I was um, gifted, but the book comes out in March. So it's not released yet, but it will come out in March. This does not have the specific date. I will put the specific date on the screen if you're curious, but it comes out in March, 2020. But that book is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. If the author's name sounds familiar to you, that's because she's the author of Station Eleven, which is a book I've talked about many times. I loved Station Eleven when I first read it. It's like a post-apocalyptic novel that takes place in a world after like this plague has wiped out like the majority of humanity. And it follows this like company of people who perform Shakespeare as they travel from like settlement to settlement. I think it's a beautiful story. It's incredible and one of my favorite books I've ever read. And when I found out that she was writing another book, I was very, very excited to try this one out. And when 
I saw this book in the mail, I was incredibly excited because I didn't know that I was receiving it, so it was a complete surprise to me, but I'm very, very grateful and very thankful to the publisher for sending this to me because I just can't wait to read this book. I don't know anything about this one either, which I'm sorry, I feel like this is gonna be a common theme with a lot of these books because if you know me, I don't really like knowing too much about the books I read before I read them. I like to be surprised. I usually like know I like an author or I like a certain theme that's in the story. All I really know about this book is that it's about two events that I think are like supposedly very separate from each other but somehow connected to each other. There's like a Ponzi scheme and then there's some woman who disappears off of like some ship and that's all I know about it. Like that's literally the only thing I know. I just know that I really like Emily St. John Mandel's writing. I love the themes of her stories. I feel like this is the type of book that like I've found myself gravitating towards a lot more recently and the type of story that I really like. It's the type of thing that resonates with me a lot. Obviously I haven't read this one specifically yet so I can't say that specifically about this one, but Station Eleven and her writing is something that is familiar to me. So that type of story is something that I think I read that book in like 2016 and I still think about it all the time. So yeah, anytime I can find like that type of an author who I can connect with, with their stories, like similarly to Erin Morgenstern, when I find these authors whose stories like just resonate with me in that way, um, I'm very excited for their new books. So yeah, super excited for this one. Definitely one of the first ones I want to get to this year, hopefully before it comes out. But yes, very, very excited. I really hope that I love it. The next book on my list is actually the second book in a series that I started I think two years ago. It's been a long time, but it's a series I've been wanting to continue ever since I read the first book and I don't know why I didn't finish it because I'm actually very good at finishing series. Like usually when I start a series, unless the other books aren't out yet, I tend to read the other books pretty much immediately, but I didn't do that with this one and I don't know why. So I definitely want to do that. But that series is the Truth Witch series or the Witchlander series. And the second book is Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. Like I said, I read Truth Witch two years ago or so and I really, really loved it. And I very much want to continue with this series because I know that I'm like the series as a whole. This is a fantasy series that takes place in a world where there is elemental magic. So there are some people who have the ability to control the wind, some people who have the ability to control water, some people can control blood. In Truth Witch, our main character can like discern truth from lies. So she's kind of like someone who has like a special ability. There's a lot of like politics in this world. It's set with the backdrop of a war. So there's like a lot going on in this story. And I really, really like it. I think it's very captivating. I think it's one of the best written YA fantasy series that's out there that I think is very underrated. Like not enough people, in my opinion, read the Truth Witch series. And like, I'm included in this because I haven't finished it, obviously. But I think more people need to read these because I think they're very good and highly underrated. I feel like I might have to go back and reread Truth Witch because I don't remember enough. If not, at the very least, I will read like a summary or watch like a book talk on it or something. But yeah, love this series and I can't wait to continue on with it. So next up on my list is actually a book that I feel like I might have included on one of these lists either last year or the year before. All the years are starting to blur together and also like I make this list every year and I read about like five of the books off of it. So, you know, it's like a tentative thing. Like I, I don't have to stick to this because I know that I won't, but I feel like I've at least mentioned this book once because it is a book that I really do want to read. But that is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. So as some of you may know, I'm actually not a very big Dickens fan. I've read Great Expectations and I don't like Great Expectations, but A Tale of Two Cities is one of his books that I've been wanting to read for a long time, mostly because of the Infernal Devices series. I love that series with all of my heart. I've been reading it ever since I was really young. This is just one of those books that they talk about all the time in that book and I want to read it because I want to understand the story. Also of everything I've heard about it, I feel like this is the one Dickens book that I would like the most, probably. So yeah, I just want to give it a try. I really just feel like reading classics too. I've just been in this like mood where I just want to read classic novels again. I definitely want to try reading this one and hopefully I finally like something written by Dickens. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I might hate it, but hopefully I don't. <laughs> but speaking of the Infernal Devices series, one of the books that I want to read this year, that I need to read this year, that is going to be absolutely the next book that I finish reading, is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which is another book that is not out yet. This book comes out in March, so it's like not too far away, but a couple weeks at least. I... <sighs> I don't even know how to talk about this. <laughs> so if you don't know, Chain of Gold is the sequel to the Infernal Devices series, which I feel like this was announced. I think this was announced when I was like a sophomore in high school. So like 
a long time ago. <laughs> and I've been anticipating this book ever since it was first announced. I've been anticipating it since I finished like the last page of Clockwork Princess. I finished that epilogue, tears were streaming down my face and I was like, give me the rest of this story. Like, I need to know about their children. I need to know about everything else that's happening in this story. Like, I just need the continuation of the Infernal Devices because that's like my favorite trilogy. So we finally have it. It finally is going to be out in March, but I have an advanced copy in my hands, which I am so, so excited and grateful to have. I can't explain to you the like sheer joy that I experienced when I like saw this in the mail. I lost it. This is one of my most anticipated books like just ever, and I just still can't believe that it's even in my hands. Without any spoilers for the Infernal Devices series, um, this follows the story of the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices series, so it takes place several years after that series concludes. But our main character is Cordelia Carstairs, and Cordelia is, if I'm not mistaken, half Persian. I don't remember if she's fully Persian or half Persian, I think she's half Persian, but I'm also Persian, and I can't express to you how much it means to me to see the main character from one of my favorite series of all time that I have been reading ever since I was like 12 years old when I was first reading the Mortal Instrument series. To have the main character of the continuation of my favorite trilogy be Persian is absolutely unbelievable to me. Like, it means so much to me. I never get to read about characters who are Persian. I think I've read one book in my life where the main character was Persian, and that's because the author was Persian. That's just, like, not a thing that you get to see very often, especially in fantasy, especially in, like, one of my favorite series. So, yeah, I, like, I can't gush about it too much because, like, I'll literally just cry, but I'm so excited. Like, I'm literally so excited. This is, like, the representation I have wanted since I was a kid, and I finally have it. Like, it's literally been 10 years. I'm 23 now and I've been reading this series since I was 12. So it's been like 11 years and I finally have it. I finally have it and I'm so excited and I'm so grateful and I just like can't wait to read this book. Okay, that is my chain of gold like spiel. I'm finished with that now. But yeah, can't wait to read this book. I'm gonna die. <laughs> so the next book on my list is one that was actually recommended to me by a friend who read this book and really really loved it. They've been telling me to read it for I think like maybe two years, at least a year now. I finally decided to pick it up and to start reading it. And that book is Severin by Ling Ma. I have actually already started this book. I have it on audiobook, so I don't have the physical book. I think I'm only like one chapter into it. I started it like last week or so. I read one chapter and I ended up putting it down because I wasn't like in the mood to continue reading. Not because of the book, just because I didn't feel like reading. This is a book that's actually somewhat similar to Station Eleven in its premise. It starts out as like this ordinary novel where there's this woman who just has like a regular day job that she's unsatisfied with. She works for a Bible product company, so they make like Bible products. She's kind of like just dealing with her regular life. And then there is this like flu, this disease that kind of spreads throughout the entire world and ends up killing off most of humanity. And then it's kind of about like survival in that state when there are no humans left essentially. And I haven't gotten to that part. We're still in the very like mundane beginnings of it, but I'm really enjoying it so far and like I said this was a book that was recommended to me by one of my friends. It's very much the type of thing I enjoy reading despite the fact that like diseases and flus are like things that like I'm very much afraid of in real life actually. Anything that is like some widespread epidemic like terrifies me but um, I really like reading about this type of stuff because I like post-apocalyptic stories. Like I like trying to get into that mindset of like what is the world like when it comes down to just a few human beings? Like what does it mean to be human and I feel like these books ask that question very well and I just like delving into that. So yeah, this is one that I've just started reading and I'm really enjoying it so far and hopefully I will finish it soon and I'll really love it by the time I finish it too. Next up on my list is The Dark Vault by Victoria Schwab. This is basically a actually a combination of two novels, so technically it's two books. It is The Archived and The Unbound, both of those novels. So technically you could count this list as like 21 books to read in 2020, but it's fine. This is just like one physical book, so I'm just gonna count it as one. <laughs> but if you know me, you know how much I love Victoria Schwab. She is one of my favorite authors of all time. She writes some of the best fantasy in my opinion. I love her books. I've never read a Victoria Schwab book that I did not like. I love her writing. I love her storytelling. I love everything about it. I truly know nothing about this series. I think it's YA and that's all I know. It's also fantasy, so like I know two things. YA fantasy, written by Victoria Schwab. 
need I say more? Like, that's all I need to know. Like, I'm, I'm gonna read anything she writes. <laughs> this is one, though, that I really don't want to know too much about. I just, like, want to be completely surprised by this because I do love Victoria Schwab's writing so much and I love her stories so much that I feel like knowing as little as I possibly can about it will be the best way for me to go into it and just experience it on my own. Just one that I'm super, super excited to finally get around to and hopefully I'll get even closer to finishing reading her entire backlist before she has some new books come out. So, yeah. Can't wait to get to this. The next book on my list is another book that is the second in a series that I've already started. This is another book that came out last year that I just never got around to reading, but I desperately want to because I loved the first book of this series and I can't wait to continue on, and that is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is the second book in the Children of Blood and Bone series. It's been a number one New York Times bestseller for I don't even know how long. Like, it's such a good series. I love that first book. I read the first one, I think, like, right around when it first came out, and I really, really loved it. I'm very excited to continue on with this series, and I just can't wait to see where it goes because we left off on, like, a very serious cliffhanger at the end of the first book, so I'm excited to see where the second one goes and where the rest of the series goes. So yeah, one of the top books on my list, must read. I just, I need to continue this series. There are so many of like my favorite series that have like new books coming out or have just had new books come out or the last book just came out. A couple more of those are on my list as well that I just like am so excited about because I love fantasy series and there are just so many good fantasy series that are currently being written that I just love so much and I'm so grateful that so many of the like sequels and stuff are finally coming out. Speaking of fantasy series, the finale of one of my favorite series of all time just recently came out and I am so incredibly excited so that book is absolutely on my list, and that is King of Crows by Libba Ray, the final book in the Diviners series. I love the Diviners. Like, I love the Diviners with my whole heart. Another series that I think is deeply underrated. Like, people need to read this series. Everyone is sleeping on it. It's so good. It's YA historical fiction that is set in the 1920s in New York City, and it's paranormal. There are ghosts. There's a mystery to solve. There are so many incredible characters, so much great representation in this story, so many different characters from so many different backgrounds with so many different experiences. Like, it's just so well thought out and well-rounded. I love this series. It's the best and you should read it. But the final book in the series is finally out and I can't wait to read this. I don't have the physical book, I have it on audiobook, but I have listened to a couple of the other Diviners books on audio before and I love the narrator, I love the audiobooks for these series, so if you want to try these out on audio I highly recommend that. This is another one of the books that I'm gonna get around to like very very soon because I need to finish this series. Like I truly can't express how much I love The Diviners and how excited I am for this series to conclude. Very sad because I don't want it to end because I love it so much, but also very much looking forward to that ending. So yeah, definitely picking that up soon. Continuing on with the trend of fantasy, I have another fantasy book that is on my list that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. This book came out like a year ago. I got the advanced copy more than a year ago. Still haven't read it, I lent it to my friend, he read the whole thing, he's been telling me to read it, so it's one that I definitely need to get to. But that book is none other than The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This book is absolutely massive, oh my god, it's gonna like kill me. <laughs> it's so big. It's like 800 something pages, I don't even know. Like it's very, very long, very thick, very heavy, and this is like not even a finished like copy, like it's not the hardcover or anything, and it's still so heavy, I could literally take someone out with this. So obviously it's like kind of intimidating because it is so long and like a dense fantasy, but I love dense fantasy. <laughs> I love dragons, and that's a major theme in this story. We have like two dragons on the like cover of the book alone, so Yes. I really don't know anything about it other than fantasy and dragons, and I think this book is also said to have really good, like, queer rep, so that's also a plus. I just am so excited to read this. Like, I want to read it so bad. It's just, like, so big, and I'm like, do I have the energy to commit to this? And I know I will one day soon. I know I will. Maybe not soon. Hopefully soon but I, I want to. I want to read it so bad. So I'm putting it on this list to hopefully motivate myself because I want to, because I love me some dragons. <laughs> the next book on my list is by an author that I read for the first time last year. I read two of her books and I really, really loved them. And ever since then, I have wanted to read pretty much anything she writes because I love her writing. <laughs> and that is uh, The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. This is her newest book. It's a YA historical fiction novel. I think this one is set during the Spanish Civil War, if I'm not mistaken. 
I cannot remember. Madrid, Spain in 1957. I have to look that up because I don't remember my history well enough, but um, yes, it's set in Spain in 1957. I really loved her book, Salt to the Sea. That's like one of my favorite historical fiction books I've ever read, honestly. It's really good. And I have a feeling I'm really gonna like this one too. So yeah, I'm very, very excited to get around to this. Love historical fiction. I love YA historical fiction. I think that's a genre that's like super underrated in YA. And I think it's starting to finally like grow a bit more. There are a couple more that I've been seeing pop up and get some popularity. I am very excited to read this and I'm really hoping that I love it as much as her other ones. The next book on my list is actually more of a modern classic and that is The House of Spirits by Isabel Allende. This is a, I believe, like considered like a classic magical realism novel and I really want to read some classic magical realism. I love magical realism of the magical realism I've read. Like I've loved every single one of the books. So I feel like going back to some of the ones that are considered like the classics, some of the best would be a good place to start. Plus this is a book that like everyone has been telling me to read for a very long time. Like not even just people on booktube, like people in my life as well have been telling me to read this book. And I really, really want to. I don't know anything about it. I literally don't want to know a single thing about it other than it's very well loved and apparently incredibly beautiful. And that's all I need to know. And I'm really hoping that I love it. Again, I've really been wanting to read a lot more classics. Another thing I've just been wanting to read some more of are translated works and also like books that are written by authors who live outside of the US, like outside of, you know, the English speaking world. <laughs> and I think that this is a good place for me to start because it's in the realm of things I like too. So I'm very excited to read this and I really hope that I love it. Along those same lines, another book that I really want to read this year, actually this is an author, this is not a specific book because I have not made up my mind about which book I specifically want to read, but the author is Murakami. I really just want to read a Murakami book this year. I don't know which one I should start with. So if you have a suggestion, if you've read Murakami, if you have a recommendation, which one do you think I should start with? Please let me know. I'd really appreciate it because I do want to start somewhere with his books. I just don't know where. So he's on my list, but it's just like a question mark of which one I'm going to start with. The next book on my list is one that I have been saying I want to read since I think like 2016. It's been on countless TBRs I've made. It's been on, I think, multiple of these videos that I've made over the years. Like I've been saying I want to read this book for so long and I still haven't and I don't know why I need to. So this year I'm actually going to do it. Like I'm actually going to do it. If I don't read this book this year, unless I like literally don't read anything this year, someone please come for me and force me to read this book. That book is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. <laughs> you've probably seen this in like so many random videos of mine and you've thought like, oh, she's probably read that by now. I haven't read it because I'm the worst. <laughs> Honestly, it's been so long that like I can barely remember the details of what this book is about other than there is some like murder that takes place and there are people hired to investigate it, which is such a vague description of this. Like this is the worst description I think I've ever given of a book. But because it's a mystery, like I don't even want to know anything about it because knowing too much gives everything away for me because I like tend to predict a lot of things that are going to happen and my mind just like goes all over the place. So I don't want to know anything. But the one thing that is super cool about this book is that it's full of like a bunch of different mediums. So there are like case files and stuff that are like physically in the book. There are a lot of like photographs, web pages and stuff like that. Like it's very cool. It's very interactive and very different from a lot of novels. So I'm really intrigued by that aspect of it. And I have heard just so many good things about this over the years. And like I said, it's been a book that I've been wanting to read for so long. So I think hopefully if I actually stick to what I'm saying this time, I'll finally get around to reading this and I feel like I'm really gonna love it. Someone please make me stick to that. <laughs> the next book on my list is actually a fairly recent YA fantasy release that I wasn't super interested in reading at first, but then I saw like a bunch of good reviews and then I read the summary and I was like, this actually kind of sounds like something I would really enjoy. And I want to give this author a second chance because I've read books by them or one book by them before and I didn't really enjoy it, but I think I might enjoy this more. And that book is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I've read And I Darken by Kirsten White, which was a Vlad the Impaler like retelling, I think like gender swapped retelling. And I did not like it. <laughs> like I really don't like And I Darken at all. And her writing was fine. I just didn't like the story very much. So I did want to give her another chance. And like I said, I've just been hearing really good things about this recently. It just sounds like something I'd like. It's basically a Camelot, Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table retelling. I don't know if it's so much a retelling or maybe just more of a reimagining or just set like in that world and time. But when I was younger, I really, really loved the story of Camelot. Like I was super fascinated by it, mostly because of Magic Treehouse and that one book where they go to Camelot, if you know what I'm talking about. 
about. <laughs> I loved that one. But yeah, I like became fascinated by Camelot. So I, I feel like I would really enjoy this. I just feel like it's something kind of different, but also in the vein of things that I enjoy. So yeah, I, I really want to try this out and hopefully it lives up to the hype. I want to find like a new YA fantasy that isn't part of a series I've been reading for a while that I really enjoy. So I'm hoping that this ends up being something like that for me. The next book on my list is another book that is the final book of a series that I have been reading for a while now, and that is The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, the final book in the Truly Devious series. As some of you may know, I love Truly Devious. I think it's a fantastic YA mystery series. I think it's another one that's probably kind of underrated in my opinion, like not enough people read it. Maybe more people have gotten into it since like the first two books, but I feel like more people should read it because it's really good and just a really good YA series and a good mystery. It's very fun, it's very engrossing, it's not predictable, and it's just a good all around series. And the last book just recently came out. This is another one that I have on audiobook that I'm planning on listening to soon. I just can't wait. I literally <laughs> love this series so much. I can't wait to find out like how it all concludes. I know we're gonna be left with like a lot of questions at the end of this as well. I'm sad that it's ending, but at the same time, very, very glad that we finally get a conclusion, and I'm really hoping that I love it as much as the first two. The next book on my list is probably my most like recommended book, like book that is recommended to me by you guys, and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Now last year, was it last year? Ooh, the year before last year. What is time? <laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, the point is, I read Circe by Madeline Miller, and I love Circe. I love Circe so much. It is one of my favorite books. Such a good book. I highly recommend if you like Greek mythology, if you like history, if you just like a good engrossing story, a very introspective deep dive into a character's thoughts. I highly recommend reading Circe. It's so good. But ever since I read Circe, everyone has been telling me that I have to read The Song of Achilles, which is Madeline Miller's other book. I literally don't even know which story it follows. I just know it's been highly, highly recommended to me from the second that I mentioned that I read Circe. And it's definitely one I want to read because I love Madeline Miller's writing. Clearly I love Circe so much and because I like that book so much I definitely want to try out her other books. So Song of Achilles is definitely high up on my list to read this year because I think I will very much love it. The next book on my list is another book that is the second book in a series that I started a long time ago and once again didn't continue on with this. It's like this and Truth Witch are the two series, like the only two series that I never kept up with for some reason. And I don't know why because I loved the first books. The first book in this series is one of my all-time favorite books, and that is The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, the second book in the Shadow of the Wind series. I believe there are four books in this series. From what I understand though about this series, I think each of the books can stand on their own. They are a series like as a whole, but I think you can also read each of them separately, or Shadow of the Wind, like you can just read as its own book, like you don't have to continue on with the series, but I love Shadow of the Wind. Like Shadow of the Wind is one of the best books ever. Just ever. Flat out. I'm making that claim. Like, it's just true. It's so good. And I adore it so much. So I definitely want to continue on with these books because I love his writing. Shadow of the Wind is a historical fiction novel that takes place during the Spanish Civil War, but it's so different than historical fiction novels, like, than what you think of when you think of a historical fiction novel. To me, Shadow of the Wind is a book that is written for people who like books because it's very much a book about books. I love that type of thing, and I'm not sure what the plot of The Angel's Game is because Shadow of the Wind wraps up like very, very cleanly. Um, it has a very succinct ending. So I don't know where the story goes in the rest of the series, but I'm very excited to find out. And I really think I'm gonna enjoy all of the other books in the series as much as I enjoyed Shadow of the Wind, or at least I hope to. So I'm very excited to continue on with them. The next book on my list is another book that was recommended to me by a friend. And this is actually a collection of short stories. And that book is Sour Heart. I truly like don't know what this collection of short stories is about. Like, I don't know what the central theme is. I just know that both my friend and my sister have been telling me to read this book, and specifically one of the stories in this book. They're just like, you need to read that story. Like, don't even read the book, just read that story if you read anything. And the friend who recommended it to me says that this is like her favorite book of all time. She loves this book. So I really, really want to check it out. I do want to read more short story collections this year because I realized I really love short story collections. Like, I really, really do. Her Body and Other Parties, which is a book I read the year before last year, I think, in 2018, 
2018 is still one of my favorite books I've ever read and that's a collection of short stories and it's phenomenal like it's just so incredibly good. As you can probably tell from a lot of the books on this list I really just want to try some like new things this year like I'm not trying to go along with hype I'm not trying to read like everything that's new like a lot of these books have been out for a long time. I really just want to read good books. Books that just resonate with me and stick with me. So yeah, that's why my list has become, I feel, like a little bit more diversified. And finally, we have reached the very last book on my list of 20 books to read in 2020, and that is none other than King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. This is a book that I have put off for so long. To be fair, I still have yet to finish the Grisha trilogy. I haven't read Ruin Rising, which I need to, I know. But like, I don't feel like it. <laughs> so I feel like I might just skip that book and just move on to King of Scars because we have the characters I actually care about in here and mentions to the characters that I like care about the most in here. <laughs> so I definitely like want to read this series. So I think I'm just gonna kind of skip Ruin and Rising and just read like a summary because I know what happens in that book anyway. Just move along to King of Scars and finally get around to this because Leigh Bardugo, another one of my favorite authors of all time, and the Six of Crows duology is one of my favorite series ever. I love those books with my whole heart, so I need to like continue on with what we have of this world as much as I possibly can. Definitely one that I want to get around to this year and hopefully I really love this one too. All right, so there you all have it. That is it for my list of 20 books to read in 2020. That took me so long to film. It's been like an hour and a half, honestly, just because we had so many books to get through and I feel like I had a lot more to talk about than I expected, but it's fine. I had a good time. I'm very excited to continue my reading in 2020. I feel like reading has been something that has been very on and off for me for the past like year or so, honestly. Last year was the first year that I didn't like fully complete my Goodreads challenge. I was several books off. I even lowered it and then I still didn't like meet the lowered number, but like I'm fine with that. It's just very like jarring when you go from being the type of person who who reads like a hundred books a year to suddenly like you're barely hitting 45 books. So it's been like pretty rough with me in reading recently, but I have had my motivation to read come back a lot recently. And also there are just so many good releases that came out that I just am so excited to read that I feel like I'm going to read them all so quickly and enjoy them and devour them. And I can't wait. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Are there any books that are on my list that are also on your list of books that you would like to read in 2020? Have you read any of the books that are on my list? If you have any thoughts, please feel free to share them with me. But thank you all so, so much for watching this video. It means a lot to me that that I can take a several month break and then come back and just have you guys here with me. Like I said at the beginning of this video, that's something I've been very anxious about recently and something I've been really stressing over and one of the things that's been blocking me from filming, but it feels really good to be standing here and doing this again because I miss it so much. Like it's just something that's a part of me and important to me and I miss it a lot because I love you guys. So yeah, thank you all so, so much. I love you all very deeply. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you'd like to keep up with me anywhere else, all my links to my social media are in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!